Africa. Home to some of the most loved animals in the world. Especially those of the Big Five. The lion, often considered one of the most iconic animals in Africa, is in crisis. The numbers of wild African lions are plummeting, but the future of those privately owned tells us a different story. We visited Scotia Game Reserve to find out what life is like for young lion cubs growing up and what the future holds for these beautiful animals. Scotia has seven lions, a dominant male, two lionesses, and four delightfully cute cubs. Filming the cubs gave me time to reflect on the future of the African lion and brought about many unanswered questions. Lions in Africa, there's three groups really. Uh, group number one would be lions that are kept in zoos. They captive bred lions, they the canned lion and those are the lions that well you can see every any guest visiting that establishment will be able to see exactly how many lions there are there, you can touch the cubs, you can get really close, get amazing photographs through the fence, but most people don't know where those lions are going and usually those lions end up on some farm later on down their life being hunted by a hunter. It's all legal, they get permits, and he pays a lot of money, and that money will go back into conservation on that farm or into the country. Group number two would be private game viewing reserves and national parks. Those are lines that have big areas, they hunt freely, and people come to view them. They live normal lives, healthy lives. Their populations are easily managed, easily watched and the owners of the private reserves and the National Parks Board are able to move those lines around to keep and maintain a healthy gene pool. Group number three are the original wild lions of Africa. They are lions that are not fenced in, they have the ability to move from habitat to habitat and naturally keep a healthy gene pool. They can move between different tribes and they're always really healthy. They have to work hard for their food. They, hunt, they travel great distances to go and look for food. For example, they'll follow the migration in the Serengeti, uh, which is hundreds of kilometers. But those are lions that scientists have to work really hard to follow and to keep tabs on. And those are the lions that are being illegally hunted and poached throughout Africa. Um, simply because they are encroaching on human areas, on farmland, and also because there's a huge demand for their manes, or their skin, or their bones, or their urine in some parts of the world, believe it or not. And before the scientists realized that those lions could be extinct, the original wild lion could be extinct. I was anxious to find out the fate of the lions of Scotia and the future of the four cubs. Out of seven, we've got the big dominant male, two adult females and four cubs. We need to now start looking at which of the young males we're going to keep of those young cubs. And we'll monitor them over the next two and a half years to work out which one we'll want to keep. Because we, we won't be able to keep the big dominant male because he's getting too old. And if we kept one of the young cubs, we can't keep their mothers because then they'd be mating with their mothers. So we'll probably end up keeping one of the young male cubs and then bringing in two females from another reserve. I left Scotia with a heavy heart and a great worry over the fate of the African lion. However, the prospect of Scotia keeping a cub brought a silver lining. If we're going to try and save the African lion, the task will be great and big changes will need to be made to prevent the Big Five from losing its king.